as you have seen six surgeries out of them two were done by me by one technique the other four were done by other techniques by the other surgeons and our chairpersons in the beginning itself they said if you make a good puncture the job is done this is what i used to say till 2020 a good puncher sal success but professor peter elkan has summarized so many papers and he has come out with a paper i am in quite uh, contact with peter elkan he has summarized even when there is a bad what what exactly you want you want a stone clearance and you don't want any complication that is the success even it was a bad puncture it was bleeding there was hell but result was good and there has been vice versa a very good puncture resulted into a catastrophic complication so he has changed and there is no paper no studies which clearly show that all good punctures they result in a good result and all bad punctures result in a bad way so you have been seeing so many techniques and what i am going to tell you is not the only technique there are so many ways to skin a cat and all are successful but what i am going to tell you is what i feel is the best if you agree with me follow this technique otherwise adopt your own our index patient which we are going to discuss is a patient in prone position having a renal pelvic stone because 80% of surgeons they are doing prone pcnl and now when the all stone bulk of staghorn is almost finishing from this even in indian subcontinent we are having only small stones and pelvic stones so this is our index patient concentrate on this <clears throat> what are our steps steps of making a puncture is ureteric catheterization followed by urethral catheterization then there is what is the position of bolsters position of monitors positioning of cm on these points i will concentrate little bit little bit because time is short <clears throat> ureteric catheterization is a must in some centers i have heard and some students from those centers they have mentioned very gloriously that we don't put ureteric catheter we are confident we can do without putting ureteric catheter i will not agree to that ureteric catheter is a must because it not only confirms the distal patency it helps you to do an rgp and visualization of pelvic elicial system it helps you to distend the pelvic elicial system patient when he comes to ot he is dehydrated stone bulk will be completely choking you have to distend the system to make a space for flow of your guide wire it confirms the accurate puncture by obtaining a good flow and there is prevention of migration of flow stones because of the mechanical presence of the calyx uh, ureteric catheter if some stone fragments they go down you can flush back sometimes the patient comes to us with lot of congestion and if you don't have a ureteric catheter you cannot even identify the puj so you have to have a ureteric catheter into the pelvic elicial system it helps you to place double j stent and sometimes if you avulse the puj also it will drain that area it comes as a rescue so ureteric catheter has to be done and ureteric catheterization confirms the adequate distal drainage and unless you have a good distal drainage don't puncture that kidney because if patient is such when there is a obstruction at the lower end and if you puncture this patient is going to leak 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 continuously and another surgery will become mandatory for which patient is not prepared now for my friends who have just joined urology success of your how do you do a ureteric catheterization when you are passing this cystoscope ureteric orifices are not straight they are at an angle and as the bladder goes on filling the angle goes on increasing what we do is we open the tap forget to stop it go on filling we are struggling in the beginning how to identify and how to puncture and the ureteric orifices they become lateral and lateral 
and when you try to poke your ureteric catheter, it may go medially and it will give, give extravasation, it will cause perforation. So right at the beginning when you are stressed up, you are going to do PCNL and ureteric catheterization fails. Many a times you will be called to a nursing home. First time you are going to show your metal as a good <coughs> PCNL surgeon. You are struggling in ureteric catheterization. So it should be known the ureteric catheterization should be done only with 15 to 20 ml of saline. Ureteric orifices, even with this directly if you pass the guide wire, and if it is edematous, the mucosa is edematous, the ureter this will go outside. There will be submucosal tunneling. So what my method is to pass a vessel tip ureteric catheter first. That is meant for that. So that it irons out the whole area. After that, remove the fissel tip, then pass the open tip, guide, open tip ureteric catheter and pass the guide wire through that. If any time you feel resistance on the way, then you should inject only the saline, 5 to 10 ml of saline. It smoothens the whole passage and passage of the hydrophilic guide wire. You will find the way. Try to leave ureteric catheter well inside, but not so much out of enthusiasm that it comes out. If it goes beyond the superior, it is not very uncommon. If it goes beyond the superior calyx, in the beginning itself you will have extravasation. Now coming to urethral catheterization, very simple thing. All of us are now doing tubeless BCNL. There is much more bleeding. The blood has to, cast, uh, has to course through the urethra only. And if you pass a very thin 12, 14 French ureth urethral catheter, it is going to get blocked. So in females, I use 18 French uh, urethral catheter. In males, it is 16 French I use. And there should be good lubrication because when the ureteric catheter is coming out and when you try to pass the urethral catheter alongside, even the ureteric catheter goes in. It goes in and it coils in the bladder. And once it coils in the bladder, what happens? When it coils, the ureteric catheter which had gone up, that also comes down with this coil. So there should be good lubrication, there should not be any friction between urethral and ureteric catheter like that and you should hold the urethral, uh, ureteric catheter nicely so that it doesn't get pushed inside. Positioning of bolsters, <clears throat> there are three ways, one is vertical bolster, bolster on this side, on this side, abdomen is free, horizontal bolster, I feel this is the best way because you can see the back is straight, you can see the back is straight and it gives a counter pressure for the, when you are putting the needle in. So this will help you in holding and stabilizing the kidney. This is the way some people use, so the, it is uh, hanging like this, kidneys also hang down, the track is more uh, longer and there is a uh, more mobility of the kidney. So it will not stabilize. But anyway, some people do it like that and they are very happy. There was a study about the putting, putting of bolsters and statistically there is no difference whether you put the bolsters this way or that way depending upon the length of the track. But other lengths they say there was difference. Anyway, there is another way by Swin Lahme. Why are we putting bolsters? So that abdomen is free, patient is able to breathe well. That is what is our concept. Our anesthetists, they don't allow us to put the bolster in between. But Swin Lahme puts it like this. And he inflates it. He says when there is a good bolster support, the kidneys are stabilized, they come posterior and puncture becomes easier. Studies have shown there is no difference whether it is a vertical bolster, horizontal bolster, below the abdomen or no bolster. All is same. This is the adjustment between you and your anesthetist. Positioning of monitor should be very comfortable. They should be straight in front. If the patient is lying like this, head is on this side. If I have to do the inferior calicial puncture, I should put both bolsters or both monitors on this side. If I have to go superior calicial puncture, both monitors should be on this side of the CM. So that everything is in front, I should not be working like this all the way. Otherwise, neck starts paining, you should be comfortable. 
So this is the way how should you should position the bolsters, both the bolsters on this side of C-arm or that side of C-arm, depending upon your alignment. Coming to positioning of C-arm. Right from morning, you are getting confused. <coughs> Whether to put it zero degree in the beginning or 30 degree in the beginning. I tell you my concept, you agree or not. This is the position how the kidneys are angled at 30 degree. You will agree to that. This is the supine patient. Now the patient has been turned prone. And which are your target? Your target is either the posterior calyx or the anterior calyx. Right? Once you know your target, you have to make either the posterior calyxial puncture or anterior calyxial puncture. You should see your target right in front. You should not see from the side. And if you have to see a target right from in front, you have to turn the CM 30 degree towards you. So that if this is the kidney seeing you, you should be seeing it like this, on the face. Therefore, my concept is to start puncture with the CM 30 degree tilt towards you. Another advantage is the CM, the X-ray tube goes away from your body, so your fertility is maintained. Remember that. <coughs> But for supine PCNL, it should be in a different way. This is how you do it in prone, but in supine, it will come closer to you. Not only that, that makes a difference. If you are puncturing the kidney in zero degree position, you will be puncturing through the red arrow. If you are puncturing through the 30 degree, you will be puncturing through the blue arrow. And this one to two centimeter migration of puncture on the renal parenchyma will result in a great difference in the bleeding complication. If you are puncturing the medial portion of the kidney, it is going to bleed more. If you are puncturing the lateral portion of the kidney, it is going to bleed less. Because the renal vasculature, when it comes inside, it divides into anterior and posterior branch. Further, they go on branching and branching and ultimately there is an arcuate artery all around. And if you puncture the central portion of these arcuate arteries, it is going to bleed more. While all horizontally oriented or vertically oriented vessels, if you are coming in between that, through the convex border of the kidney, through the broadest white line, it is going to bleed less. If you puncture the center portion, it is going to bleed more. So I strongly recommend you should see the target right on the face and position the CM with 30 degree tilt towards you in the beginning. You have positioned the CM. <clears throat> now what do you see with CM? What does it show? CM, one view, is like seeing through one eye. Is it sufficient? If I close my one eye, I can see all of you. But is it okay? Or it is like taking a picture with a camera. We feel we are seeing everything. Is that enough? No. It gives you only the length and breadth. It does not give you the depth perception, the distance. This is a camera picture. If you see with one eye, you will see this. You will see the moon in the cart. You will see the moon hanging with the crane. You will not appreciate the enormous amount of distance between the moon and the cart if you are seeing only with one eye. If you want to experiment when you are driving a car, suddenly close your one eye. You will not appreciate the distance between your car and the car ahead. You will immediately open up so that you know the distance. Experiment it and see it. <laughs> what happens <clears throat> if you are seeing with one eye, like in this case, whatever object comes on this line, whatever object comes on this line will be seen as if you have reached at the target. You have been seeing it right from morning. When you place the needle onto the skin surface, you were feeling that it is in this. So on this line, whether the, whether the uh, needle is at the skin, at the target, or deeper to the target, 
all these three in one siam view will be seen like this this we have seen you agree you don't know the depth and therefore god has given us two eyes and with simultaneously with both eyes when we see we come to know all the three dimensions now if i have only one eye and i have to see the distance of myself between umesh sharma i will go to that side with the same and see from here so i have to see umesh sharma through two angles that is what if you have to do a depth perception you should do so you change from 30 degree to 0 degree when you change from 30 to 0 whatever needle tip will be there on this line will be seen at the target others will not be seen at the target only the yellow needle oh sorry 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 my god i jumped a lot yeah only the yellow needle which is seen at the target in picture number 1 in 30 degree alignment of the c arm if you turn from 30 to 0 it is the only yellow one which will remain at the target but what will happen to the other one very sincerely now you see that what will happen to the other one the other one which was seen at the target in 30 degree in 0 degree view it will be lateral to the target in the 0 degree view if it moves lateral to the target i am superficial i am behind the kidney the other way if i turn from 30 to 0 and the needle which was seen in film 1 at the target this one when i turn from 30 to 0 it will move medial to the target in the next view this is the crux of pcnl if you understand that puncture becomes very easy don't get confused with caudal cephalad right that all sides if i have to see this i can see this this way that way i can pee from above i can pee from below caudal cephalad everything is possible i have to just obtain a second view remember only one view 30 and 0 in 30 to 0 if it moves lateral to the target it is superficial if it moves medial to the target it has gone deep this is the concept now puncturing techniques what are the different puncturing techniques there are three bullseye technique triangulation technique and gradual descent technique <clears throat> bullseye technique is very simple bullseye is just seeing in the center and going and hitting it at the target so in bullseye when you position the siam at 0 degrees you have to just maintain the needle tip needle hub in the same straight line go straight 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 you will hit the target you will definitely hit the target if you are able to maintain needle tip needle hub in the same straight line in the same alignment at one go you will definitely hit the target you will not realize you may go even beyond but your image will remain at the target right from here to there this is the sure shot technique called bullseye technique it can be done in 0 degree it can be done in 30 degree wherever you want only thing you have to maintain needle tip needle hub in the same straight line go in and it will be you will be at the target see you have to maintain this needle tip needle hub in the same straight line go in deep 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 you will reach at the target and our target is a calyx because we are entering through the calyx and stone is in the pelvis you reach to the calyx vertically down like this and pelvis is here after that you have to turn and go in am i clear on that point so bullseye technique with siam in 0 degree position disadvantage is the track so made has a vertical segment it is medial it has a vertical segment from skin up to the calyx and then inside the kidney you have to manipulate wriggle out reach up to the stone in the renal pelvis when you are doing that and you have made a straight track 
and now you are trying to turn the position where is the fulcrum fulcrum is at the renal parenchyma when you are doing vertical entry and then making it horizontal it is at the renal parenchyma and it is going to bleed more also bullseye technique you are puncturing the central portion the medial portion of the kidney which is going to bleed more another disadvantage is it is a good advantage is it is a sure shot technique it is medial puncture far away from the colon but disadvantages are medial puncture away from the broadal line it is going to bleed more if you enter vertically and the guide wire has to go horizontally through the infundibulum you need a terumo guide wire which will find its path therefore people with difficult punctures they will always be using terumo guide wire otherwise if you are going in the same straight way even your j tip will straight way walk in so difficult guide wire placements particularly if you have punctured the anterior calyx tearing of renal parenchyma when you are doing this maneuverability inside and mobility within pelvic calicial system because horizontal track sorry vertical track and horizontal movements your difficult movement is there all through <clears throat> coming to triangulation technique i will explain this in triangulation technique uh, please whosoever is sleeping this will make you clear what is triangulation technique first position the c arm in 0 degree identify the target this is the target and make a mark a here is the target now change the cm from 0 to 30 degree and now when you see this particular calyx it will be marked here as b now you have two points in 0 degree a and in 30 degree b actually if you see mathematically or trigonometrically you have created a right angle triangle on the back of the patient why right angle triangle this is a 90 degree angle if the patient's back is straight isme light nahi jalti where should i go i'll come here no no it's okay this is a to b is a straight line and a to c is a right angle triangle and since you have turned from a to b making an angle of 30 degree this angle c is a 30 degree angle so this is a right angle triangle on the back of the patient one angle 90 degree another angle 30 degree obviously the third angle has to be 60 degree because the total of these three is 180 degrees and in this if you have all the three angles known to you and one length you know a to b you can measure on the skin in a triangle if you know all the three angles and it is a 90 degree angle 90 degree triangle the pythagoras theorem applies to this and that says you have created a right angle triangle 90 30 60 3. we know all the three angles and length of one arm so length of the other two arms very easily can be calculated and to put it simply i will not take you to mathematics arm ac means from 0 degree if you go in it will be 1.73 times the arm ab ab you know and if you want to start from c and go in sorry b <coughs> bc will be just double the ab so it has become very clear you have marked a you have marked b measure the distance between a and b and now position the cm in b b position means in 30 degree position start from there take a bullseye puncture and you already you already know the distance between ab was 3 cm so if you go 6 cm just double the distance you will reach at the target so it is such a easy nicely trigonometrically calculated distance you know you have to start the bullseye puncture at point b see i am in 30 degrees and you know if the distance was 3 cm you have to just go 6 cm and you will hit the target so this 
triangulation technique has made the life simple if you are fond of doing bullseye punches. I hope this is clear or any because triangulation technique everybody has his own ideas but this I have made it very simple to understand. <coughs> Coming to the gradual descent technique. Gradual descent technique is gradually you are descending down onto that particular calyx you have chosen. So it is like a plane landing onto the runway. It is always done with this CM in 30 degrees as you see in the first picture. And when you start, you don't start at the calyx. You take a distance of 3 to 4 centimeter depending upon your landing distance from skin to the calyx. If you feel it is going to be 4 centimeter, go 4 centimeter away and then start landing into that descent, descending down onto that. So 3 to 4 centimeter lateral, you position the needle like this in the second picture. And it should be in alignment with the infundibulum so that your track is straight. When the plane lands, it should go straight onto the runway. There should not be any angulation. And when you do that way, you can straightway go inside and it will be in alignment through the convex border of the kidney and it will be less bloody. So gradual descent technique, you start 3 to 4 centimeter lateral, go into the cup of the calyx, you will be coursing the, through the convex border of the kidney and you will reach into the kidney through the broadest white line. And remember in the first image which you will take when your needle has gone in, there is a possibility that your needle has gone straight at this. There is a possibility your needle is here. There is a possibility your needle tip has here. And in all the three, you will be feeling that we have reached at the tip. We have reached at the target. Now what you do? Just turn, just turn from 30 to 0. And when you turn from 30 to 0, in the zero image, if your this goes laterally, you needle which was seen at the target, if that moves laterally, you are superficial. If you are superficial, you have to remove the needle, increase the angle and go in again. If it moves medially, means you have already gone deep, remove your needle, decrease the angle and go in again. Now I will show you some real pictures. This is Siam is being positioned from 30 to 0 degree and see what is happening. The needle is moving. Come on. Medial to the target. So it has gone deeper to the target. What I have to do? It has gone deeper. I have to pull it out, decrease the angle and go in again. And the distance, if I have moved so much laterally, my my mistake is too much. If I have moved just a little bit, I will decrease little bit. If there is a lot of distance means I have to reduce the angle tremendously. Now see what is happening. The CM is turning from zero, from 30 degree to 0 degree and needle is moving lateral to the target. So it means I am superficial. This was on the skin surface. Therefore, there is so much of distance. And when the CM is moving 30 to 0 and your needle tip remains exactly at the same place in the cup of the calyx, you are exactly there where you want to just go to 4 millimeter in and you are inside. So gradual descent technique is lateral puncture through broadest line, easy guide wire placement, minimum bleeding, offers excellent mobility because you have gone straight in, straight out and there is a excellent mobility, there is no bleeding so vision is clear, you can do a better job comfortably. So in nutshell, there are three ways, this is bullseye 0 degree, this is bullseye 30 degrees and this one is gradual descent technique through the convex border of the kidney in alignment with the infundibulum going right up to the renal pelvis. 
this is my concept <coughs> coming to dilatation of the track any questions in this yes only thing is in superior calyx if it has gone quite supracostal you cannot go above 10th rib so then you will have to do bullseye so you have to make adjustments in that yeah thanos If your needle tip is at the target in 0 degree and 30 degree, you are at the target. There are three situations when water will not come. Either there is a blockage between the PUJ up to the stone is blocking, your water is not reaching up to that. There may be some pus in this, which is thick pus, which will not allow the fluids to come out because needle is thin. Sometimes there is matrix all around the stone. It will not come out. If you have made multiple punctures, there will be blood clot around, then it will not come out. So these are the three, four situations when you will not get a free flow outside, but you are at the target. Be confident if 30, 0, same place, no worries, pass the guide wire, it will go in. You are in the PCS. So, pine PCNL, whosoever is doing, he is not following this technique. They are doing all in zero degrees. They are not doing the identity means exact anatomical way of doing PCNL is this, so that you know you are hitting at the target. Otherwise, you can hit the target like this and like this also, no problem. So, <laughs> sir. Exactly what uh, S.K. Pal sir told, gradual descent. We are following gradual ascent. Exactly gradual ascent. Your own technique we are following. We are very happy with it. Same cup of the calyx, not here and there. Exactly at the uh, calyx, we, will, we can puncture. Same your own technique, we are doing in the opposite direction, like left hand and right Chandra, hand. Chandra, you are a young man. And if you are following exactly I see you, you have to put the CM close to you. In, in supine. <laughs> Remember that. In uh, supine, sir. Yeah. Uh, no. In supine. No, no, sir. In supine, no. exact angulation will be when the CM is comes what? to you. We will have a next debate right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, allow me, allow me a Do comment, doctor, please, doctor, Dr. Pal. Can I have Dr. D.P. Singh from Muzaffarnagar? You may be superficial, but you may be anterior, you may be posterior. At in superficial plane, you may be caudal, you may be head towards the distinct foot end. How to differentiate that you are superficial, but you are anterior or you are posterior or you are... Sir, I will sit with like you separately. That, you have probably not understood. Like that, if yeah. we are deep, so we can be in four directions. Your needle has to reach at the target in 30 degree. After that, turn from 30 to 0. It was at the target in 30 degree. When you turn from 30 to 0, if it is moving literally you are superficial or posterior okay but that is the crux of that you were caudal or you are distinct to the, uh, the no if you are caudal then you are even in 30 your needle will not be at the target if you are at caudal you are caudal in all the angles whether it is 30 or 0 you will remain caudal but we have to manipulate the needle no then you have to come out and hit the target Basically, allow me a moment, yeah. sir. The, sir, please. Yes, there, there is no need to do the bullseye technique at zero degree. All need to put the seabird needle and uh, opacify the system. Always do it on 30 degree. And a question: We operate very frequently patients that have been operated by other colleagues with open uh, operation or other PCNL. Does this change your approach if the patient has been operated and there are scars and uh, the position of the kidney has it changed? Any operated case the kidney will be fixed posteriorly. It will not be so mobile. And then puncture, you have to remember that your angle will not be so deep. You have to go superficially. That is the only difference. And you may encounter some fibrosis on the way. So you should have a metallic dilators ready. There will be a little tough to dilate that area. These are the only two differences. So, so then you go in another direction, not uh, follow the previous uh, pathway to get away of the scar? But sometimes there is no other way. 
you have to go the same way because that is the most ideal way leading you to this stone. So you have to, you have, don't bother about whatever way you are going. If it is coming on the way, fibrotic material, you have to screw it more. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <clears throat> Microphone, please. Three minutes remaining. Yeah, please. So this technique is improvisation on the both techniques, both prior techniques, that uh, gradual descent technique. But when you are applying that gradual descent, how do you take that three to four centimeters distance, whether you use three centimeters or four centimeters or five centimeters, how do you decide that? It is arbitrary. It's arbitrary. It is not that you have to exactly measure. So you see the thickness of the patient and imagine the distance you have to travel from skin up to the… Uh, so this, it may not be exactly the on the broader line. Maybe no, no, no. It is not exact that it will be three centimeter only. In a female patient, anyway, I don't know whether, yeah, uh, my one more talk is there in that I have shown how much distance to travel. There you will get the answer. Okay. The second there is one is more talk. In the triangulation technique, we take a right angle triangle, but it is not, skin is not so smooth. It is not as flat surface. It is slightly curved. Yes. That end, whatever point is there, that one to two centimeters makes a lot of difference. I think whatever calculations we make on the triangulation technique are all bullshit. But that's what my opinion Absolutely is. correct. You have understood very rightly. We are only assuming that the back is 100% right angle. It is not that. Back is curved. So it is not exactly 6 centimeter. It may be, if 3 centimeter distance, it may be 6.5, it may be 5.5. Little distance. But you know how much depth to go in. Coming to the dilatation, we have so many dilatation techniques. <coughs> Step dilators, telescopic dilators, there are many single stage dilators. And what is the difference? I do not like these dilators because they have a conical tip. And once they have a conical tip, when your dilator goes in, it is touching the stone. The tip is touching the stone while the maximum dilatation has been achieved one centimeter behind. It is not dilating till the end. The conical tip comes on the way, it will not dilate till the end. You will see such patients, the stone will, be, will not allow it to move further and the exact full dilatation of, if it is a 30 French dilator, 30 dilatation is about 1 centimeter behind. Now if you pass a implant sheath, it will stop there only, till the maximum dilator. So these dilators are good when there is a good space in the kidney. If there is no space and if you try to push your conical dilator, you cannot push the stone, you will perforate and injure the kidney and it will start bleeding. So I don't use, particularly in those cases where there is a stone is approaching right up to the calyx. And my choice has always been Teflon telescopic dilators. Why? Why telescopic? Because once you dilate the, when you injure the kidney, it is an injury. It is a grade 4 communicating injury to the kidney you are creating from skin to the pelvic elicial system. Kidney bleeds more. So you injure the kidney and you remove the tamponade. Once you remove the tamponade, when there is nothing to stop the bleeding, kidney will start continue bleeding. Till your next dilator comes in and blocks that. Sometimes when you are removing a step dilator and putting the next dilator, guide wire also comes out and the kidney is bleeding. So once your one dilator is in, it is just opened the, made, made the hole of this size. Now put the next telescopic dilator over that, so it will tamponade and it will increase the hole to the level you want. So always use telescopic dilators. I prefer Teflon because they are only three or four in number. The fourth one reach it up to 30, so they are very quick. All implant sheets are available. Whatever nephroscope you have, you can use that. And if there is a fibrotic passage path, then you should use a metallic dilator. So this is my take on the dilators. And lastly, the placement of implant sheet. Implant sheet has got two ends. One is a straight cut. The other one is oblique cut. Oblique cut is meant for when there is a lot of space inside the kidney because one centimeter distance is there between the tip and the oblique portion. So if the whole one centimeter can go in, it is good to have a 
this uh, beveled end inside so that when you are rotating also the beak remains inside you don't come out it is much safer but if there is no space if there is no space in the kidney like stones like this which we encounter quite often you should use the other end the straight end so that the straight end reaches right up to that and it tamponades from all around the renal parenchyma and then you can remove the stone easily like this even when you are standing in the renal parenchyma you can open up the passage see there is a stone in front this is only when you have a rounded end this flat end this straight end inside it is tamponading from all sides you can see the stone break this stone make your space once the space has been made then thrust your nephros this implant sheath inside and make your space remove this stone so take home message will be pelvic elicial access should be through convex border of the kidney cm should initially be positioned at 30 degrees monopolar view of cm does not allow depth perception that is only imagination cut this gradual descent technique provides an ideal accent and all this has been uh, written and it has been published now in this particular book 56 pages you will understand everything if you read this book Thank you very much for a patient listening.